everybody I'm Red Pixie back with another video <coughs> yeah hmm <coughs> must have got some dust or something but anyway Cardi B's legal server <coughs> oh <coughs> yeah something in my sinus is making me sneeze I don't know what it is, but anyway, Cardi B's legal server threatened by Bob. I'm not supposed to be reading this article. Mercy, it's a sneeze. It's not going to read. I'm going to sneeze. Oh, anyway, Cardi B's legal server threatened by blogger Tasha K. Tasha K loves threatening people. I don't know why. She likes threatening people. Oh, okay. Where did you go? I don't remember telling you to back up. Okay, let's. Oh. Ooh. <coughs> <coughs> oh, the left sound that seems to. Seems to don't like something about this article. But anyway, let's see if we can get through this article. Cardi B's legal server threatened by blogger Tasha K. And according to the article, it says, Enraged rap maven Cardi B is clapping back at the innumerable wild allegations he written about her by blogger. By blogger is the Borat Yoro lyricist is serving a couple of bloggers the court papers for alleged defamation. The problem is that one of the bloggers who will serve papers to appear in court reportedly threatened the innocent person who delivered the court summons. According to TMZ, Tasha K said she was in her legal right to shoot server in the head who delivered the legal documents to her home. Now, I wonder if she was looking at the number on her box to make sure everything was correct, or he was inside of her box checking her mail. And it is illegal to open someone's box and check their mail. That's what I always understood. But the server said he assured her. He he has the legal right to do what he did. So, I don't know. But as the article goes on to said, as Rolling Out previously reported, Cardi, 26, promised to sick her legal hounds on Tasha K and another blogger named Star Marie Albany Jones for claiming the rapper is a drug-addicted prostitute who has herpes. And according to the court documents, she specifically says herpes B. And in my Google research, herpes B is a rare form of herpes that the macaque monkey has. And you would have to have a macaque monkey be exposed to the macaque monkey to be in contact with the herpes B virus. I know in car in um Tasha K's lives, she was um going back and forth with well she had blisters on her lips. Is that she was talking about the herpes on her bump on her lip, but any critical thinking, intelligent person who understands words knew what she was saying. He said, "Well, I hear some. I would see some um, bloggers or would say, well, well." She has a blister on her lip, and a blister is a form of herpes. 
to me. What's the word they're using now? Um, what's the word they're using now for that? Hmm. I forgot, but it'll come to me. But anyway. It's obvious what Tasha is saying. She's playing games with words. And that can be detrimental. Since, since um, the courthouse that she's going to is the Supreme Court in Georgia. So I don't know who her lawyers are or who got back or who got or who's backing her. Somebody gonna be spending a whole lot of money. And I don't know if I check Tasha K's net worth and her net worth is a hundred thousand dollars. That's her net worth. So someone whose net worth is a hundred thousand dollars lives in a multi million millionaire neighborhood. With the likes of Waka Flocka and, and, and Tammy Ramirez, because like Tammy say, um, Tasha lives around the corner from her. So, I don't see how she is net 100000 But then again, if I want to say her husband is very wealthy. Some people are going to say she, he lost his job. I don't know, but with the things that I'm pretty sure his bosses would have a serious problem with that, with being connected to that type of drama. But, anyway, TMZ said she was in her legal right to shoot the server in the head. I don't think she had the legal right to shoot him in his head unless Georgia laws is different from South Carolina laws. Now, as rolling out, previously reported, I said that, according to TMZ, Cardi's lawyers, and I heard she has a team of six, hired a process server to deliver a lawsuit to Tasha K's home this past week. The fact that Cardi B filed this lawsuit some days or weeks ago and Tasha was saying well her hadn't been served. But later on, after she threatened Mr. Byron Dennis, he put a lawsuit out on her after Cardi B. And he found her. And her lawsuit, his lawsuit, was served. She didn't show up to court, and neither did her lawyers. Her lawyers wrote a letter that he claimed had a typo in it. So, Mr. Dennis Byron found Tasha K in his lawsuit was served and a protective and, and a um, protective case was also served to Tasha when she had some person who's supposed to be her father call and threaten him. So he served he served Tasha. How he found Tasha? I don't know, but he found her. Now, then, and, and I did a video on it, um, Mr. Byron Dennis, Mr. Dennis Byron, since, since Tasha did not show up at the court, and, she, and, and, and he said she pissed the judge off. He tell her don't bring a knife to a gunfight. She sent a letter 
to the jury. I guess a letter is considered a knife and a billionaire and a billionaire lawyer is considered a gun. Like he said, he want all the smoke. Now, think about it. In the video, Mr. Dennis Byron is seen cheek to cheek with Cardi B's lawyer, lawyer who is cheek to cheek, smiling like he's going to use this big smile. Now, Mr. Dennis is sharing one of Cardi B's lawyers. And you can go to my video and you can see the two pictures of his, his lawyer. And then you can see the same lawyer walking Cardi B into court in the, in the case against Betty G and the other girl, the two bartenders, that they claim Cardi B did all this thing to them. But we don't see none of that happening. All I see is Cardi B on the table yelling. I didn't see Cardi B do none of that. And if she did, and if she didn't, I don't know. But they sharing the same lawyer. Now, Mr. Byron is she has Cardi B's lawyer. I wanna think it's been an exchange. Okay, Mr. Byron, you show me how to find Tasha K. So I can get this lawsuit served. And you can use my lawyer. In, to, in, to sue her. I'll, I'll allow you to use my lawyer. Something like that. It, it makes no sense. And I. It, 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 it just makes no sense. I just ain't talking to me. know how to treat people. I don't know who, you, who she's talking to. But it's gonna cost because Tasha K is worth a hundred thousand net. I understand her husband is worth more for them to be living in the neighborhood in the first place before Tasha started doing this YouTube sen supplementation sensation. She's been living in this living in this multi millionaire neighborhood. So her husband makes money. But now, all the money she's making on YouTube is going to lawsuits. And I guess it's what she wanted. I guess he's going to let her do what she wants. But I don't know if she's going to be pulling from the money that they have for their lifestyle to take care of lawsuits. Anyway, that's just my... But I, that's just my perspective on what I'm getting from that, from the fact that Cardi B filed a lawsuit, couldn't get it served. Weeks, so, so many weeks later, Mr. Byrne, Mr. Dennis Byrne goes in and do investigative work on Tasha K as bullying. And Tasha threatens him and put all this stuff out there in his lies, as he say. And then some father person calls and threatens him. He puts out a protective custody thing on Tasha K. A protective order of the threats. And then he finds her, serves his lawsuit, and she didn't show up for court. And now that they're her lawyers, he called Luca's own lawyers. And for error in the paper, in the letter that she sent to the judge that pissed the judge off. One thing I know about judge, they want you showing up or your lawyer. You sending a judge a letter as if this is an insignificant thing? I think I just can't need the new lawyers because if my lawyer sent paperwork, my thing, we understand it, um, this lawyer don't show up. He has a paralegal slash secretary to show up and do the paperwork. I've never known a lawyer to send a letter to a judge. I've never heard of it. 
So the lawyers didn't show up, <clears throat> and the lawyers didn't send their secretary or paralegal to do the work. So that seems problematic to me. So Cardi B and his uh, Dennis Byron don't. He gets to use Cardi's lawyer, and she shares her lawyer with him, and he shows her how to find Cardi B and get that paper served, that lawsuit served. Now she's been served, so now once she finds out, her, once Mr. De Byron, De Dennis Byron finds out where his is served, so she hires someone to go out there. And that um, service processor sounded very happy because you can tell he got paid really good to do that. Now, while we're now going to search her mailbox, I think I think that is illegal. Now, him serving those papers may not be illegal, but I think opening up a mailbox and going into it. Now, I don't know about that. I said, can I have a point on that one? Now... In the audio that TMZ obtained, you can clearly hear Tasha K use threatening language at another person who appeared unannounced at her house. The server identifies himself and is heard asking the mail with Tasha K, do they live here? After the two pull up their home pull up to their home. Tasha is outraged as usual. Not only because the mail server was in her driveway, but also because she says the server was looking through her mail. And he said he wanted to make sure that he was at the right address. And one way to do that is to go in the mailbox and see if you're at the right address. Because a lot of times those, you can be, I don't know, sometimes boxes don't have the right address on it sometimes. And sometimes boxes have no address on it. I see boxes that have no address on it because then you really don't know if you're at the right house. So the only way to know, he would have to um, open the box and go through her mail and make sure that it's the right address. Well, that's one way he could do that. He says, I had to just make sure I had the right address, ma'am. Why would he wait until... Tasha those come up to dig through her box, go through her mail. I wondered about that. But don't do that again, she explained. If I wanted to blow something in your head at my mailbox, I could have. You on my property and don't want to tell me who you are. He told her who she is and he told her his name, which to me, telling me your name don't mean nothing. First thing I need you to tell me is who you are. Okay, all he had to do was say, Tasha K, you have been served. That's all she had to say. Going through that little thing was just to anger her. And she fell for it. She threatened the man. Now that is going to be held against her. Yeah, when I had my service process, she threatened to put, uh, uh, to put something in his head. She, she just gets herself set up. Everybody, everybody says, okay, you've been served. You didn't do that. He said, my name is, okay, your name means nothing to me. Who are you? Okay, I'm a process server. My name is so-and-so. Okay. Well, what are you serving me? I would have instantly known it probably would have been for Cardi B if I was her. So... He served her the paper. The way he went about that was kind of weird. It, I guess it was like seeing if she would do what he did. Threatening people. People got to get away from threatening people. You know? hmm. Anyway. The server then quickly identified himself again. And assured Tasha K that he was with Dennis Liquor Rice to be at her address. Which he was. But her issue was him going through the mail in her box. Tasha K, who is also called La Tasha K, then accepts 
that the man is on official duty to deliver the legal documents. She curtly told the man goodbye and giggles sardonically as she walked away. I don't know if it sounded sardonically, more so than it sounds. <laughs> I've been caught. Sound more like that to me. Oh, they found me. Sound more like that than sardonically. Whatever sardonically is. But I know what it is, but I don't want to see it. Because though I understand a word in the context of a sentence, I like to have the exact definition in my head because I have issues forming words to what I understand in my head. So I go to the dictionary and look up the word. And it says grimly mocking or cynical. I don't think she was grimly mocking. It didn't sound grimly mocking or cynical to me. It sounded. <laughs> Cardi found me. That's what it sounded like to me. Okay. After the episode went down, Tasha K obviously unbothered and undeterred posted this message to Cardi B and her 17,000 Instagram followers. Welp at hashtag I am Cardi B. That's what happened when I come home with my family at midnight, this man is in the dark, at midnight, and there's a fat white guy going through my mailbox as we pull up. Cardi paid the man to, Cardi paid the man to deliver it. Cardi probably don't even know what color the man is, whether he's fat or what, even though she may, because she, because I don't think... I just don't think Carter just paid somebody to get it delivered is what I think. And I think the stuff that is firing has something to do with that. Because black man comes to her door, she threatens to shoot them and all kind of things. So they sends a white man to her door and she does the same thing. But she, <laughs> but she laughs it off. I don't think it was cynical. I think it was. <sighs> she found me. Okay. Then she says, this is going to be fun. I'm starting to think that Cardi would do anything for Carl. Girl. The most crazy Cardi going after a YouTube blocker who's worth this $100,000 for clout. That's the most, that's the most cynical thing I ever heard. That, that's cynical. You, Kosh is the one that's, Kosh is the one that doing whatever, doing anything for clout. Carter just suing you for doing anything for clout. I don't get that part. Now, that part is crazy. And I think I looked up Cardi B's wealth. Her worth. Let me. I looked her work on worth up. Let me Google this. Um, Cut the microphone on. Cardi B net worth. See, Cardi B net worth is roughly $8 million. As of last year. So I already looked this up, but I want to look it up again and let y'all see it. This is Cardi B's net worth. Now, someone whose net worth is eight million. And it's not talking about her revenue, what money she's making. It's her, it's her net worth. Now let's see Tasha K's net worth. According to The Motley Fool, J.P. Morgan Chase has $2.50 trillion worth of assets. Nobody asked you that. Be quiet. Do that again and I'm going to type it in. 
Natasha K. Net. According to ALLSTARBIO, as of 2018, Cobb's net worth is under review, but she had an estimated net worth of around 0.9. I'm going to try again so she won't get on my nerves. There's Tasha K. Okay. She has an estimated net worth of $100,000 as of November last year. Now, think about it. A woman whose net worth is $8 million is clout chasing is clout chasing a person whose net worth is $100,000. That ain't laughable. I don't know what it is. Now. Okay, Tasha. We go back to the article, and Tasha goes on to say, and then she tags in, hashtag Nicki Minaj, hashtag Megan the Stallion, real rappers via TMZ front page. So now she's picking at Carter as if Carter hasn't matured enough to just stop responding to her. So now she is taunting or trying to taunt Cardi B and say she is clout chasing and that Nicki Minaj and Megan Thee Stallion are real rappers and she's not. I don't care for rap, period. So, so. I don't like Cardi music, and I don't, I, and I never like Nicki music. Megan Thee Stallion, they wants to replace Cardi with Megan Thee Stallion. I don't care. You can put who they want. I'm not in that space to even care. People that gets emotionally invested in these rappers, celebrity lives. It's being distracted from the real world. I try to. So a lot of this stuff just get on my nerves. But this thing about Tasha Case and what she doing, okay, compels me to want to talk about it. And what does she say? On hashtag unwind with Tasha K. Hashtag now I gotta go by. Carter B, you gotta go by. No, no, it's, it's going to affect Carter B. But I think it's all a game anyway. With Tasha K and Cardi B, I think it's all a game anyway. Um, they got this fight between the millionaire and the uh, middle class. She's with $100,000, so she is, I think, um, I think they say, I think $250,000 is up. It used to be $150,000, but $250,000 is up. It's considered middle class. It used to be $150,000 before, I guess Obama made some changes, legislative changes. So Tasha, is for his, her income, she ain't even middle class. Now, her income with her husband, and I think her husband just by himself is middle class. The together is middle class. Just like Beyonce and Jay-Z are multi-millionaires. But together, they are billionaires. And together, Tasha K and her husband are middle class. I don't know what I don't know her husband's name so much, but I would net worth him to see what he's worth. But I'm not 
so invested into it to the point where I feel like I need to find out that information to actually do that. But in watching other bloggers talk about it with their in-depth information that investigative work that they do so well, if I happen to see that information, then I will go type that in and see what he's working, then I'll do that. But just out here just doing all this time and energy and money investing in Listen, now, this is just something for me to do as a mm, person dealing with certain physical issues to do. Listen, Cardi B is suing the two bloggers to have highly inflammatory posts about her removed. All Cardi B asking is that Tasha removes the post. She don't think they're inflammatory, but they are. Saying somebody, and you're looking at the um the the, the papers that were filed. The three main things in there is that she didn't say allegedly enough in there. She didn't say allegedly because she was thinking, well, it's coming straight up out of Star Marie, Ma Star Marie Mouth. Therefore, she don't have to say alleged all the time. She just say it because she say it, and that's the source. No, just because somebody say it don't mean you're not supposed to allegedly say it because how you know this person telling the truth. And even if this person telling the truth, it's second-handed. It's not first hand. First of all, it didn't come from Cardi B. It didn't come from Cardi B's sister, Cardi B mama. She said she get this from Cardi B friends who are close to her. Everybody knows friends who are close to you and they get fired or you're not their friend no more. Even though they may be telling the truth. They only tell it because they may. And if and Cardi B says it's not true, then you gotta say a legend. It is what it is. Let me see if there's anything else about this article. But that seems to be it for Cardi B. This thing about Chicago prosecutor Kim Fox. This I don't even know what up with this one. On the car, R. Kelly and the Jim Smollett thing. But I see all of this stuff here as a esoteric thing with her. And R. Kelly and um, Abinati and um, all this other stuff that's going down. And it's just too, to me, it's like what, um, Lovely T said in Linus and Judah Live, she said she don't deal, she told Tasha K she don't deal with her because of her. She don't deal with low energy people. And Tasha's dealing with low energy. And that's what she said, she don't deal with low energy people. And I'm thinking that's the same thing with Candy. Candy said her issues were spiritual. The attacks came on her. And I think it's the same way. She found dealing with Tasha low energy was pulling her in. And, and, and like she said, she got kids to take care of. She can't be, you know, just dealing things so she lets certain things go. She let it go. And sometimes you got to do what's best for your family. This thing about Whitney Houston and alleged lesbian love. <laughs> do I really care about that? I don't think so. All of, this, all of this celebrity entertainment stuff right here is just, like they say, it's all low energy. And I have no desire to be emotionally invested in low energy. I need to be up here. 
I try to keep my energy high. It's Remy Martin. I don't get the Remy Martin with her hitting a girl in the eye. I want to think this is to get Remy Ma attention, get some attention on Remy Ma, and this girl is being used for all of that. I don't think Remy Ma going back to jail for punching that girl in the eye. Because see, Remy Ma is being forgotten. Just like Joe Burden is being forgotten. Becoming irrelevant, and she's been coming irrelevant since Cardi B came on the scene. This thing is, did Dr. Dre assault D. Barnes? I don't know what to think about this, but if he raped her, he raped her. This here seems to be like another R. Kelly situation. Pay it off, got the money, then she become homeless. If you don't want to spend your money wisely, you will become home only if you don't use your money wisely. But now, this thing with Dr. Dre coming back out, and Wendy is the one that's bringing it out, and Wendy want Remy Ma to call, and I think Remy Ma should go to Wendy, because if she don't, she will lose, she will be like Mimi and uh, Cynthia Bailey. Yeah. She will be baby Wendy, they will be friends no more, but Wendy did tell you to call her but she don't want to talk to nobody but them. See, when the information is going to get out there all kind of screwed up, whatever way, but you might as well give it to your friend Wendy and let her do it. Because wicked people going to, you know, encourage her. When you, well, Wendy, if you, if you got to talk about it, I know that's your friend, but you got to talk about it. Let's see what else is in here. I think that's about it for the articles in here. I just touched on these in here because, you know. That's it for this article here. And Tasha K, girl. I heard the guy named Dana J. He got a lot of receipts, and he don't like what she did to R. Kelly because Tasha K. Um, put out the information of the girls here hostage, starved, and all that. She put that information out there. Who gave it to her? I don't know. And I want to think it's the same thing. That's how Tasha K. got beat down, whatever, after the Harvey thing. And I want to think the situation with Candace. Candace can do what she, the stuff that Candace had to put out there, she could do that. But I think she chose not to do it because she would be going down the same path with Tasha Tasha K. When she took when she put that information out against R. Kelly, according to his close friend who works for the Georgia Bureau, says didn't happen. And the fact that he brings out the fact that she is best friends, hang out in the house of the savages. And that's how she got that info. She was working with them to, to do that. Now, I don't know, but I want to think the fact that she went and put that information out like that on R. Kelly, which is obviously not true. The information is not true. Because once they broke in the house and scraped the house of everything, including including the sinking, including the um the kitchen sink, there were no signs of any girls being held hostage, being starved or anything. That was just R. Kelly's house property. And now he knew he got a house at Trump Tower. Thing about this is this. Candace may have had the same kind of story that will put her in the same place as Tasha K that she got scared and backed out. She got hacked and all of that. I think Tasha K went through all of that, but Tasha K, who both of them have an IT husband. Tasha K get the hacked and whatever. Her husband is an IT. He can fix it. Candace's husband is IT. He can fix it. But 
I don't think Candace's husband want to go through, want to be a part of this situation the way Tasha T's husband is a part of the situation. So I'm thinking that's the situation with Candace. And Candace's side, she said it's dark. She said it's really, it's really dark. She got the story, but she said the story is coming out. But she chooses to let it come out that way. And as it come out like that, she'll respond to it. Which is, that's a better thing for her to do. And which is the same route that Logan T took. She chose not to get into this deep esoteric stuff that Tasha is into. And... Candace choose not to get into this deep esoteric stuff that Tasha is into. The fact that Tasha came out and discredited her interview, and then she got this other information that was coming out. Girl choose, girl choose. But sometimes it's, it's just best not to just go down certain rabbit holes with people. But. This thing with her is this is the life she chooses to go. But I mean, everybody don't. Okay, she seen her pregnant belly. So, and if somebody mentioned the scribe, you can say, Angel, my scribe is gone. But after you have a baby, that scribe will be there and it never goes away for some people. Which, and I had four kids, and mine went away. All my um stretch marks and whatever. Once the baby is gone, once the baby is here, all of that goes away. And I'm 58 years old, and I still don't have stretch marks and whatever. I got one of my sometimes with medication to blow your stomach up too much. You can get stretch marks like that. But anyway. I think this is it for the Tasha K saga. It's like a soap opera. You know, it is with her. But that's the path she chooses. And she has every right to choose what path that she that she wants. But then again, there's other people right to also choose a less darker path. It is what it is. Okay, well, um, that's it for this video. And if you like the video, you can give it a thumbs up. If you want more of my um, pixie thoughts, thoughts on certain articles, Subscribe to the channel, and I will be back with more videos. Bye.